When I went through kindergarten, we learned the alphabet. One letter a week. C was for cat, and we learned all the different types of cats, both wild and domestic. We had B week and Z week and even A week. When A week arrived, my dad and a few others brought different types of livestock to show us. Others came and talked to us about their jobs as farmers and ranchers, and we were thoroughly indoctrinated into agriculture. Good afternoon. My name is Deshay Hannigan, and I represent the Artesia FFA chapter. Artesia is a small place, surrounded by the Pecos Valley River, fields, pastures, orchards, and ranches, all coming in different directions from the lush agriculture valley. Many of my friends and I in the Bears class knew where most of our food items came from. We understood that they did not come from the grocery store. I was lucky in my elementary years and now, as a high school student, to have grown up in the country. And I often wonder how different it would be if it was in a more urban setting. Mark Klaus stated, It is time for we in agriculture to find a way to answer that question for those kids. For others are more willing to share their opinions when it comes to how the basic essential of life, food, is produced. I can't agree more. It is time for agriculturists to speak up on our successes, new developments in food production, and how we are able to meet the consumer's needs while enhancing trust in their food supply. Consumers are ready to jump on the bandwagon, endorse the next trend, and go with the flow, especially with their food. They have lost trust in modern farming and have their doubts about how food is being produced. They hear the messages that industrial agriculture is wrecking the environment and being forced upon them by the corporate America. We must tell our story, often and to as many people as possible. Individuals and organizations are trying to tell our story, like those of the California Agriculture Communications Coalition, who give farmers and ranchers a platform to tell their story on agriculture websites such as www.noacaliforniafarmer.com. Or individuals like Jeff Fowl, who reaches out to nearly a million people a day through social media efforts. Maybe consumers would feel better about their food if they could see people producing it on a daily basis. There are people like the Flemings from Bell County, Texas, who tell their story on Facebook every day, chronicling their life on a farm each day. We need to make sure the true story of agriculture is told, not just the stories we see in the media. There are bad teachers, bad preachers, and bad agriculturists. But not every agriculturist sold salmonella eggs from substandard conditions on their poultry farms. The producers who are polluting our watershed and making innocent people sick are few and far between. Our industry knows that factory farms do not beat their livestock or place them in conditions that will not promote their growth for what the consumer demands. We need to tell our story often and more often than the media and our adversaries allow us, so that 99% of those bad teachers, bad preachers, and consumers will believe in us. We have the general public who listen and believe everything they hear on the television, radio, and through those heroes and celebrities. We need to make sure we get the word out to the world through the faces the consumer knows. The What's for Dinner campaign by the National Beef Council shows new and old beef products by using celebrities. Even farmers and ranchers have their favorite clothes, vehicles, and foods. And with a little help from everyone in the industry and, some, and a few true believing celebrities, we can get our word out to the world. Mike Rowe from the series Dirty Jobs gets agriculture. Not just because many of his 250 episodes show him working on farms side by side with farmers. Rose states, Everything we value in our culture comes from agriculture or mining. Everything sprouted from the rootstocks of these two industries. He believes in the power of green and in the power of brown. That soil is a source of our lives. This dirty job celebrity goes on to say, most Americans view farms today as those seen in Colonial Williamsburg or on Hee Haw. But with technical advances in modern agriculture, farms today rival those of Silicon Valley. They are more efficient now than ever. 
but no one seems to have gotten that memo. No one seems to care. Now we just need to make sure to get the word out and make sure Gwyneth Paltrow, Pam Pamela Anderson, and the American consumer get the memo as well. Lastly, agriculture is a big word involving many different career choices, not just on the production agriculture side. No more fighting over organic, natural, free range, industrial agriculture, sustainable agriculture. Like Mike Burnett states, it really doesn't matter. There are plenty of marketing opportunities out there for everyone. The problem is when one part of the industry bashes another to promote their particular interest. We are all in the protection of safe, nutritious, affordable food together. No more fighting among the ranks. We are all on the same team, the agriculture team. So what message should those of us in agriculture be sending to those kindergartners, young adults, baby boomers, and our senior citizens. It should be simplistic, telling them about where their food comes from, whom and how it is produced, and the many different choices that they have. We need to be the teachers stepping up to the board and talking about A and how it means agriculture. Thank you.